look down at the Orange Bowl live. Was it the greatest game ever played? It was certainly one of the most dramatic. Pete Axtell takes us back to January 2nd of 82. I love this tacky, tawdry, crumbling old house of thrills. It's seen almost everything. Super Bowls, college championships settled. But I have a feeling that when the citizens here finally pass one of their 900 stadium bond issues and get around to tearing the Orange Bowl down, the one day that'll live most in its history will be January 2nd, 1982. What made the game so special, it seems to me, it wasn't just another of those San Diego up and down the field shootouts. It had such shocks and surprises, such dramatic shifts. And it began with the biggest surprise when Miami's special teams made the mistakes that helped give San Diego their early 24-0 lead. Up back takes it, not too deep. This is Wes Chandler, and he is all trouble in an open field. And Wes Chandler could go the distance. Wesley Chandler's inside the 10. He's in the end zone. And there are no markers down. A punt return was embarrassing enough. But could a Dolphin special team really fail to pick up a kickoff? Here's the kickoff. Takes a hop back the wrong way. That might have touched a Dolphin. It doesn't matter who it touched on. I couldn't believe the reaction of the, of the special team. They're dodging the ball. They must think it's a punt. I watched the game from this spot, just a few feet from the Dolphin bench. And I must admit, in my whole career, I've never felt the buildup of emotion and intensity and noise at a sports event that happened when Strzok entered the game, the Dolphins started coming back, climaxed by that unforgettable hook and trailer play at the end of the half, Doriel Harris to Tony Nathan. If it sounds like I'm getting excited all over again, well, when it happened, I was standing here just a few feet from the lateral. Hard throw. Look at that! What a play! What a play! It was a play that uh, we've uh, worked around and practiced with maybe once every month, month and a half. And it, we only had a call one other time in a game, and the quarterback was sacked. So when this one came into hull, I said to myself, this is not going to work. And uh, my intention was just to catch the football and run and get as much as I could. But when the ball was thrown, I noticed when I came back to catch the football, it was thrown a little bit off to my left. So I had to lunge. And once I was lunging, I said, well, I won't be able to run with it, so nothing else, just pitch it and see what happens. So I pitched the football out, and as I was hitting the ground rolling over, I heard the crowd screaming. I thought maybe we fumbled it or something. When I looked up, Tony Nathan was going to the end zone. I couldn't believe it. By the fourth period, it appeared the Dolphins had seized control. But maybe this kind of drama wasn't meant to be that easy. Andrew Franklin fumbled, back came the Chargers, holding out the defense and framing another great performance by Fouts. 118 to play. Fox running. San Diego with first down, but trailing by seven. Here's a throw. Wes Chandler has the ball inside the 10 yard line. But thinking back over all the fast paced fireworks of that game, the one play that stands out in my mind was the momentous collision between Kellen Winslow and Glenn Blackwood. Here were two great athletes clashing at the height of their competitive fire, and you can hear it even through the noise of this Orange Bowl. And I suspect you'll still hear it echoing even when this wonderful old place is no longer here. Nice piece, Pete. Who are you picking in a game today? This is my least suspenseful pick of the year. Everybody in the country knows I love the Dolphins. San Diego's favored by two. They made the wrong favorite. Dolphins plus two.